What's going on, guys? I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. You know, we are less than 40 hours away from Doom Eternal at this point. I am so hyped. The reviews are out. It's overwhelmingly positive. Everyone who has played this game seems to absolutely love it. You know, I'm just so hyped, dude. Like, I've had my Collector's Edition pre-ordered since June of 2019. I have my Deluxe Edition pre-ordered on Steam and preloaded so I can play at midnight. And on top of that, I've just been binging gameplay videos all day of Doom Eternal, and the game just looks absolutely absolutely phenomenal man i cannot wait to play this game and i don't really know what else to say man i am so pumped up to actually play through this campaign now the reviews like i said overwhelmingly positive people are even going as far as to call this game probably the greatest first person shooter campaign of all time which i mean that's pretty insane to think about like this game just seems like it's doom 2016 on steroids like they took doom 2016 and made it better in every single way imaginable it's kind of tough waiting these last couple days here but you know what we've made it this far what's two more days at this point but anytime there is this much positive press surrounding a game you know there has to be that one review out there that just has to completely bash the game for literally no reason other than to get clickbait views to save their dying website and that's exactly what a website by the name of wired.com did when they released this review for doom eternal which is like the only negative review you will find on the entire internet now the title of this article review whatever you want to call it is doom eternal is a dizzying catastrophe it's immense messy and not nearly as good as the original now i'm not even joking when i say this i got at least a hundred people sending me this on instagram discord or even just linking it in my youtube comments telling me i have to make a video on this review so you know what i didn't even bother reading it i just figured you know what if this many people are recommending i need to make a video on it i'm just gonna go for it so this is gonna be my first time reading through this entire review so guys you know what i think we're in for a true treat here this should be a true masterpiece of games journalism just judging from the title because it is the complete opposite of what literally every other review or first impression video out there will tell you so i think without further ado guys let's go ahead and check out this fantastic article and find out why doom eternal is a dizzying catastrophe demonic blood brutality and speed when doom rebooted itself in 2016 resurrecting one of gaming's oldest franchises into the modern era it built a new airtight formula love for itself. It was a set of ideas that emphasized speed and intimacy in combat, rewarding you for your daring with more health, more ammunition, and more excitement. Then all of that excitement was wrapped up in a pulpy, pastiche aesthetics? I don't know what that means. A big hero with big guns who hates demons and wants to tear out their big guts. I mean, I guess this guy, or girl, I don't know, uses the word big to describe everything. Like, I've never thought of guts as big. Like, whenever I've ripped out the guts of a demon in Doom, I've never thought, like, oh, damn, those are big bro but anyway whatever all told it's simple immediate satisfying and perfectly suited for a sequel i could not agree more and hence why we have doom eternal doom eternal is that sequel and it immediately sets to work upping the ante instead of mars it's the entirety of human civilization that's under siege by demons from hell there are more enemies more weapons more elements in the sandbox of combat so basically what you're saying here is they took every aspect of doom 2016 and just added more you know, there's more enemy variety, there's more weapon variety, there's more combat variety in the sandbox. So basically it did exactly what a sequel is supposed to do. It's supposed to take the existing elements of the previous game and just overall make them better. But anyway, apparently that's a negative. And the story has gone full maximalist, a heavy metal short that spans 15 hours. So they've basically doubled the length of the campaign. That's pretty awesome. It's immense, messy, and unfortunately not nearly as good as the original. Well, if you listen to any review other than this one, you would hear the complete opposite. Like, people are saying this one is so much better than Doom 2016. It's like Doom 2016 on crack, man. Like, this is the only review I've seen that's actually negative on this whatsoever. Doom Eternal, which comes out Friday for PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Google Stadia begins with a disorienting immediacy. So you mean this time we don't have to go around with a pistol shooting a bunch of mindless enemies that don't even try to attack you? You know, that sounds great to me. As the Doom Slayer, a mythic hunter of demons, shotgun always in hand, you're hunting down a hell priest in a fortress above a ruined monster infested earth. He's part of a triumvirate that if not stopped will usher in the complete destruction of the planet which is an early indication of the problems at the core of Doom Eternal. Hell priest? Who? What? It feels like an immediate whiplash as if you've been thrust into a story that's already half over with no clear indication of how you arrived. Well that's exactly how Doom 2016 was. You woke up and all these demons were all over the place. You're not exactly sure how it entirely happened or what 
what exactly went down that led to this entire situation, but you know what? People still enjoyed that game perfectly fine. That kind of fits with the whole theme of Doom. The whole point is, you're literally just thrust into this world where you have to kill every single demon in fucking sight, okay? It's really not that complicated, and it fits the theme of Doom perfectly, especially with the vibe they're going for from Doom 2016. Like, it's almost identical to how Doom 2016 starts. You wake up, and you're literally in the middle of an infested Mars that's just covered in demons you have to kill, so I don't really know how this is much different, but you know, as you play the story, I'm sure it will all make sense, just like Doom 2016 did. For those who were interested in the story of the last game, and would like to connect the two, it plays as though several chapters have been skipped. Once ensconced, the plot doesn't get much better. It bounces around dimensions rapidly, and key narrative information is often conveyed through outright lore entries. It's dizzying. Well, you know, to me, this isn't a negative thing whatsoever, because instead of disrupting combat or the flow of gameplay with cutscenes every five minutes, you're going to be able to read lore entries if you want that story aspect. To me, that's the perfect balance for a gameplay-focused game like Doom. You know, there's a basic story there that gives you the premise for being in these different situations, and if you want to dig deeper, you have that ability. The lore is there if you want to go back to it and find out exactly what happened. To me, that sounds like perfect game design, in my opinion, and I personally like the way they handled that because when I'm replaying a campaign mission, I don't want to be interrupted every single time I play that mission by a cutscene because, say, I'm using it for gameplay. I then have to make a cut in the video to get rid of that cutscene to remove the spoiler. So I think the way they're handling this fits the theme of Doom and the gameplay focus of the game perfectly. And personally, I think it's the right way to handle it. Like, it's not going to be like Destiny where there's literally no story unless you read the lore. There are cutscenes in this game. It does look like there is an overarching story in the campaign, at least from the one hour of campaign footage I watched today. You know, I got a clear idea of what was happening in this story. So I don't know. To me, I think it's the right way to handle a Doom campaign. But what do I know, man? I haven't played the game yet. It's just that every other person who's played this game didn't have a problem with it whatsoever. Not that a story has ever been the most important factor in a Doom game, then why the fuck are you bringing it up? Like, you literally just made your entire point completely invalid. But it's an underrated factor in why 2016's reboot works so well. It's not an all-told and exceptionally clever or original story. Its minimal characters weren't exceptionally interesting. The conceit of an energy company mining hell itself for power is both too on the nose and somehow in the era of climate change not on the nose and Jesus Christ are we really trying to compare doom eternal to climate change oh my god the polar bears are gonna die let's compare that to literal hell on earth I don't fucking know dude. I could see why people wanted me to read this holy shit you know here we are in 2020 we are comparing doom eternals campaign to fucking climate change I mean these are the same people that probably got triggered over that mortally challenged joke back when they first revealed the gameplay. So, you know, it's just to be expected at this point. The media is an absolute joke, and being a games journalist is something you should definitely not be proud of these days. But it was a story exceptionally well told. Here you were, a silent avatar of rage, but held under lock and key by an amoral energy company and forced to fight demons. Not just for the joy of fighting demons, but to combat an invasion caused by someone else's incompetence and greed. Well, you know, you weren't really forced to fight the demons, you know, Doom Slayer exists solely to kill the motherfucking demons. But anyway, that's beside the point. The game excelled at tiny moments of characterization and mood that gave flavor to the action. The Doom Slayer casually breaking the energy company's things and ignoring the man in charge. The deranged corporate messaging from the company itself, which slowly devolved from standard pablum to the demented ravings of a death cult. Yeah, I mean, there is that. Like you said, you can dig deep into the Doom lore, but if you don't want to, you can still enjoy the game. Just going around, killing a bunch of shit. Killing demons is still wickedly fun, but without the smart design of the original, it blurs together into an indistinct sort of thrill, like riding a bunch of roller coasters in a row, until you really can't tell one apart from the other. Well, are you stupid? Like, I ride roller coasters back to back all the time, like when I go to a theme park, I can tell the difference, but you know what? Maybe we aren't dealing with a fully mentally endowed person here. Here's the thing, contrary to its over-the-top appearance, what made Doom 2016 such a good game was its restraint. The narrative restraint gave it personal personality, and its mechanical restraint focusing on the combat on a handful of key elements made the fast, frantic action work. The gameplay was balanced around a sort of rock, paper, scissors. Demons try to kill you, and you shoot them with a variety of weapons. When they get weak, they flash, and you can get close to initiate a special finishing move, a glory kill, that restores your 
health. If you run out of ammo, killing the enemy with the Doom Slayer's chainsaw will give you some. That means there's a straightforward solution to every possible problem encountered in Doom. If you're hurt, glory kill. If you're low on supplies, chainsaw. Otherwise, keep fighting. Repeat until the only thing left moving is you. Fortunately, Doom Eternal messes with the alchemy of its combat much less than it does with its story and world building and does add new elements, arguably too many, but they remain manageable <laughs> due to the way they're grounded with the essential dynamics of the predecessor system. So what's the deal here? They added too many, but it's still balanced and easy to, uh, like, what the fuck is this? You're literally contradicting yourself in the same sentence. But anyway, let's keep going, man. You know, I just really want to get through this, dude. I want to find out what this big reveal was, you know? Was it the climate change thing or is there something even worse waiting for us as we get further into this review? There are more extremely powerful weapons that function like a get out of jail free cards, allowing you to defeat powerful enemies in a pinch and clear yourself breathing room even more than the original. The action here represents less the typical rhythms of a shooter game and more something like Ikaruga or any of those old 2D arcade games where your primary objectives were to keep moving and dodge a lot of enemy attacks at once. That's literally the point of a fucking arena shooter. What? That's literally the point of an arena shooter. Have you never played a first person shooter before? Like the whole point of Doom is constant movement while killing demons. That is the entire point of the game. The powerful weapons function like power up bombs did in those old arcade games too. Clearing the screen and letting you survive survive longer, but the point is to always keep you moving, always keep dodging, and to take as many of the bastards with you as you can. Yes, that sounds like fucking doom. What the fuck is the problem here? To that end, the game introduces more explicitly arcade-like elements, like extra lives, all the better to kill demons with. What is the problem? Like, the whole point of doom is to kill demons, and you're complaining that there are more ways to kill demons in just badass ways, while constantly moving around the different arenas. That to me sounds like the perfect experience and exactly what I'm buying Doom for. But you know, apparently this is a problem. I mean, I highly doubt this person played Doom 2016. Like they probably watched a Let's Play of someone playing it on the easiest difficulty and skipped all the gameplay parts and watched the cutscenes. You know, that honestly would not surprise me at this point. Killing demons is wickedly fun in an orgy of cathartic violence. Why the fuck would you use the word orgy to describe Doom? I mean, I guess you skull fuck the motherfuckers with your shotgun, but you know what? That's that's not really the word I would look for, but anyway, we're almost done here. But without the smart design of the original, it blurs together into an indistinct sort of thrill, like riding a bunch of roller coasters in a roll until you really can't tell one apart from the other. Doom was a smart focus take on over-the-top busy action. Doom Eternal is that same same game with its success pulled so taut that they are starting to tear and when the game tells you to rip and tear I don't think that's quite what they're trying to say so apparently you know improving the existing formula of doom 2016 adding more variety to the combat making it easier to go around constantly moving killing demon after demon that is a negative thing I mean this is absolutely amazing you really just cannot make this shit up 2020 games journalism I mean it just speaks for itself at this point. It's so obvious what this article was. Like, it didn't even need to exist. Like, I wouldn't even call this a review, in all honesty. There's, like, no details on the actual gameplay. There's nothing actually said about the story. There's nothing said about the multiplayer. This person was literally pumping out pure garbage to get some clickbait views. And, well, I'm sorry to tell him, but I clicked on this article with ad block on, so, you know, no ad revenue for me. And luckily for all of you guys out there, you know, you got to read through this article with me without having to give them any money. So, you know, that's the perfect perfect way to go about this. But anyway, guys, you know, that's going to do it for this video today. Just a fantastic review all around. You can really see why Wired.com is probably financially struggling and having to resort to bullshit clickbait like this. But you know what? We are so close to Doom Eternal that I can almost taste it, man. I am so hyped. I cannot wait to play this game. And I'm kind of debating whether or not I should do a Let's Play series. A lot of people seem to be asking me to do it. I don't really know if a lot of people would really be interested in it. So what I could always do is I have a second channel. So I could always do like a Let's Play series on there and just upload it.
uploaded to that channel and do like a community post on my main channel anytime I upload a video. That way I'm not spamming my main channel with a bunch of gameplay videos. So that's definitely a possibility. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that. I can also try to stream it too, but I'm just going to warn you like my upload speed is dog shit. So it may get a little pixelated at times, but you know what? We could try it out on Twitch or something and just have a good time, hang out, play Doom and not the best resolution out there. But you know, Comcast upload speed is pure garbage, probably even worse than this article. So you know what, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video today. If you did enjoy it, feel free to drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. You know, for every like equals one demon killed at the hand of the Doom Slayer. You know, we can retake Earth together one by one. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You know, you guys have just been absolutely killing it recently, and I just appreciate the absolute fuck out of everybody who watches these videos, dude. Like, honestly, I'm just having so much fun recently. I'm just enjoying making all these videos, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying them as well. And yeah, with all that sappy shit out of the way, I will catch you guys next time. Uh, yeah, my life is lovely now, I'm focused on me. You said you were about to die.